promised you some shop time. Let's get right into it. Um, these are the, uh, probably best to go over, these are the tools that you're going to need and a couple little extra things that just make it a little easier for you. Um, you'll see right here, this is the, uh, the tool kit you get with the CR10, uh, all the Allen wrenches. And I've got an extra adjustable wrench here and this will come in pretty handy because we're gonna put a little bit of uh, pressure when we tighten up these bolts over here and this is like an extra pair of hands. So. You can do it without one of these, but this just makes it really nice, and especially if you're alone. Um, and this particular plastic clamp is good, so um, should have one of those around the house anyway. Uh, so let's get into it. We're going to just go ahead and pull these wrenches out. We'll need the three largest sizes here. We'll put those right on the belt plate. And uh, I'm going to need you to come right over here and just take a closer look at this. You could just zoom in and take a look at this wheel, and um, I need you to see this motion right here. This this motion is what really causes a lot of problems when you're printing, um, and when your print head comes back and forth, this motion um, will change with the weight of your print head coming back and forth. So these are two really important things here. So we're going to try to fix those right away. Um, Okay, um, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, this, is a, th this is handy to have. I'm using two rolls of tape here, but you can use anything that's equal in, in size, something that's soft enough that won't damage uh, this part right here. So um, I'm going to get this up, and I'll just use the, my fingers, and we're just going to put them across here. So um, when we true this up, the block will be even across here. You can see this. This one's tight and there's space underneath here, so this thing's in really bad need of, of truing here. And make sure you don't have it up on a, on a bracket underneath here, on, on the edge of a bracket. This one's good. It doesn't, wouldn't hurt just to look under there, take a peek. Okay, we're good. Um, so we'll want to take note of which wheels are loose. Both the inside wheel over here and both outer wheels are loose on here. That's just, you know, really no excuse for that. That's, that's total bad news. Um, the inner wheel, however, has the adjustment on it. So if I was to, this is that eccentric adjustment, so that if I turn this nut in here, um, it'll bring these two wheels closer. However, these beams are going to have a hard time collapsing in. And uh, what you're causing it to do is to pull this side in even closer. Now, looking at this side, these wheels are adjusted just about right. The top one's a little loose. The inside one is actually a little tight on this side. And we'll try to do a post adjustment to try to get that. But we're gonna concentrate on getting this wobble out of here right now. So let's, let's concentrate on that. And our little combination wrench out of the kit. And we're just going to loosen these two up. Okay. Those are loose and they're freewheeling. You just see they're actually wobbling on there, so they're plenty loose. And this one, um, this is a little bit uh, hairy right here. This particular um, bolt, you can't get to the head of it because this is blocking it. You'd have to take this bracket off to get to the head of this bolt. There's just no way to do this, so um, I cheat. <laughs> um, I give this a real quick little turn, and the shock of that will tighten that, that bolt up, okay, so, so you get some tension on it. Okay, so we just want that snug anyway, uh, so we can still turn this. And we want to turn it so that you'll be feeling the wheel to get an idea of where you are. You'll turn this until the wheel is at its loosest point on here. Okay, now I feel it's starting to tighten up. The wrench is right about here, it's starting to tighten up. So I would imagine um, when the wrench is right about here, it'll be 
180 degrees away from that. We'll, we'll feel it's starting to tighten up in the opposite direction here. It's somewhere right in between there, so that would be right about there at about 4 o'clock. So now we have the most space between this beam and this wheel that we possibly can have. Everything's loose here. Okay, these are the two screws I'm talking about. And we're just going to loosen these up. Now, this is going to allow this whole bracket assembly with the wheels connected to it. All three of these are going to slide now. This one's going to slide away from it. Okay, this one, and I just want to give it enough that it will slide. I'm sure I've got enough slack on it now. This one. Let's get this guy. Okay, I think we're good there. This is where our little clamp comes in handy. And we're going to put the clamp against here and against the back of this. Be careful you don't grab onto that wheel while we're doing this. Okay. And we're going to pull those in. And let me just illustrate. Uh, make sure you stay off the wheels because you're going to want to feel the tension on the wheels. Okay. Unless we can give it just a little more. Uh, we want to feel when the wheels start to tighten up there. So this one I've actually got a little loose. Just going to take the rattle out of it here. Now the axle's fairly tight there. We're going to tighten this one up. I just I got a little carried away there. Okay. So we got uh, both of these wheels. The bottom one's loose. The top one's touching. Um, and this one is totally off right now. What we want to do is we want to put pressure on this wheel as we rotate that eccentric in there. And it's going to pull these wheels in toward uh, the middle. And as you've noticed, one wheel is looser than the other. So what's going to happen is one wheel is going to be tighter than the other wheel. And there'll be just enough adjustment, I think, left over in where the hole goes through the bracket that we can manually push the screw over to that side of the hole and tighten that. And vice versa, if this wheel is too tight, we can loosen this up and even the pressure out between these wheels. It's not correct, but it's... Uh, it's going to put this thing back in whack again. Thank you. Um, so we're going to take our wrench now. And we're turning the eccentric. And you're pulling this wheel in. In turn, that wheel now is going to pull these wheels toward it. Now, these are really, this one's really firm here. Uh, make sure I'm not grabbing the wrong thing. Okay. All right. This wheel's really firm. This one's nice. Um, could be a little tighter. This one's firm, so we're ready to start our tightening sequence. And I'm going to come right over here to this screw. I'm sorry. I'm going to come right over to these, and this is that bracket. What we're doing is we're tightening this bracket where it slides against the X uh, carriage, or I'm sorry, against the X beam here. And I'm just going to snug it so it doesn't move. We'll come by and tighten those later. Okay. Check your check your tension on your wheels. We've got tension on both of our wheels now. Let's take the clamp off. That tension may change. Um, boy, that, that's awful nice. That wheel still slides in the rail, so you're not going to damage the, the plastic on the wheel. It's hard plastic. And uh, this one, I'm pretty fortunate to get these where I want them. When I push this down into place, uh, the bottom one's tight, the top one's loose. I can spin this. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm evening up the level on here. So now I'm pushing down against there. And this is going to be our final adjustment. Back this up. Okay, we just make this loose but not, not rattly loose. And we're going to push in on this bolt and kind of hold the nut at the same time. This isn't really a good way of doing it, but it's the only way we have. So, and now we got a real tight 
and now the bottom's a little bit loose. So what we did, we drew, we drew up that slack out of there. This is nice. Let's get this one settled in. Okay, we're nice and level. That's down. And with these trued up, uh, we should have a nice uh, level X beam on there. So we're going to do the same thing there. We got this loose, and I'm I'm pushing the the axle or the shaft or the or the whole bolt in this way toward the beam as I'm tightening. Okay, and that wheel is nice and tight. That wheel is nice and tight. And this wheel is about perfect. So that's really the only adjustment we have other than the slack in the screws on the other side. So we're going to call this one good. We got even pressure. We're a little tight over here. Um, but we brought it down quite a bit from where it was um, on that. And that's as good as it gets. Um, the rest of it, and uh, I, sh I probably should, shouldn't forget about this. It kind of depends that table level at this point could be adjusted or maybe off in the first place by how many turns this is out. And we should probably could have measured this to begin with. You could be tightening this to a off-level table and, and making this wrong. But um, right now we can, we can probably just use that as a, a guide. Loosen this up. There we go, we got a little tension on it now. We're about even all the way across, so our beam now is level with the table. Okay, we're going to do one more adjustment on here. And we're just going to check these wheels on the other side. Not much we can do about it. Um, before I go over there, I want to just make sure all of these are tight. So we don't want to let this get away from us. I'm going to go over the tension of the belt. Feels a little bit loose. There are two screws to loosen here. This one, you can probably the best way to, to go is right in between here. Um, a nut between the bearings. We're just gonna put a little bit on it. This is this is not a, a contest how tight you can get this either. That belt is about perfect right there. Um, I can't really tell you how, what kind of torque or I can't give you any engineering numbers on that, but um, you'll know when it's tight enough that it's, you're not stretching it or that it's not binding the motor bearings on the other side. So just make sure everything's snugged down good. Check all of our adjustment screws. Okay. Um, I don't want to turn these right now. I'm just going to put enough torque on them that I know that they're that they're tight. That's tight. And once you have this tight, and you turn one of these screws, you could run uh, the alignment out of whack again. So uh, we know we've got it right now. Um, let's check this side. And what we're doing is we're, we're checking on the wheels turning. The top wheel over here is turning freely on this side. The inner wheel is tight. The bottom wheel is service, within serviceable tolerances. So we're just going to leave that one alone. This is easy to get to. We're going to just pick on this one right away. Grab our tools. is tight and what that's going to do is it's going to help uh, with the leverage to keep that um, out on the end there from flopping around loose so that's about as good as we can get it without the eccentric the eccentric bushings okay everybody's tight here um, this might be a good time right now it's this is a little off subject but this might be a good time to just check these two as long as we got all the wrenches out and everything. I'm going to run this up just a little bit. And we'll just 
just get underneath and we'll check the back, uh, the tension on this back wheel. And everything looks great. Everything looks great here. So uh, belt's tight. Uh, we're good to go. Um, I guarantee what we did today, I guarantee our prints will be better. And uh, you'll see it in the layers. If you ever see, just uh, you'll, you'll go along for a number of layers and then you get a little shift mark in it. That's from the um, play coming out of the X-beam as the Z's coming up. And there's a little bit of bind on it. Um, there's no way to control that without a second Z. However, we did the best thing that we could do for it. A lot of people with a second Z, and I'm guilty of this myself, will let this go because that second Z kind of compensates for the play on this side, but it's so ever important because of the twist in the beam. You want to take that out of there. And I've got a, um, when it became real apparent to me was when I invented a uh, bed leveling system called the Stinger, and it touches the bed in a number of places. And I noticed when it came down, it would touch the bed and the beam would flex on it. So it became quite apparent to me what the problem was. And um, I started noticing the, the, the layer shifts in my prints. And uh, when I tightened it up, I finally got around to tighten, tightening this thing up. I looked around for information, how do you tighten this up? And I could not find it. So basically make it up as I go along. This is the logical way to do it. Um, so we printed afterwards and the prints were day and night. So um, I hope everybody found this uh, session educational and uh, enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go to my website, 3dprinttoform.com. My name is David Ashenbrenner, and I enjoyed doing this video for you. And please stop back, subscribe, and um, if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comment uh, thing. And uh, whether you liked it or not, like it anyway. So <laughs> appreciate you coming by. I know there's other videos to watch. So um, we'll, I hope we talk soon. Thank you.